good morning. Um, today we're supposed to get a bad snowstorm. A lot of snow is supposed to come in, so I'm up early. It's about 5:45 in the morning. Um, tomorrow I'm finally going uh, to my first of two RV appointments. So tomorrow's my first RV appointment where they're going to be fixing the minor cosmetics of the van. They're going to fix the um, propane tank, the little screw that you unscrew as you're filling it up so the gas can drip, drip out to let you know that hey your propane tank is full they're gonna fix that um underneath this cabinet right here um there's a wheel well cover which a screw has come off and so the wheel well cover is just flapped wide open they're gonna secure that and then um i don't know if you can see right here um, these USB ports, I have a USB port here and I have one right behind you. When I, whenever I plug in, uh, plug to the USB port, it makes like a sizzling, burning sound. Not like a burning sound, but like a sizzling sound, like it's fry, like a frying sound. So they're going to take a look at that and then they're going to take a look at my inverter system. So it's going to be an all day, day, all day thing tomorrow. And since we are getting a lot of snow today, which it was supposed, the snowstorm was supposed to start today, like around, uh, like around... 10 but it's actually i heard plows outside so i looked outside i'm like whoa so um i'm getting up now guys it took everything in me to get up i didn't get no sleep but i'm up because i gotta go do laundry and uh do a couple of other things and then just kind of hunker down and ride out the snowstorm it's supposed to be today uh into 10 o'clock tonight so that's gonna be a lot of snow so I'm going to get my van prepped. I'm going to get dressed and then we're going to head out to go do some laundry. So I'll see you guys in a bit.
so right now um i'm gonna get ready to go to um mcdonald's and grab a coffee um i need a coffee and uh mcdonald's i real i found out has a french vanilla a, a, a zero sugar french vanilla coffee i'm all for that so we're gonna go get that i tried it yesterday for the first time and it was amazing it was freaking amazing I got my sugar-free iced vanilla latte. Um, you could tell it's sugar-free, you can t taste it, but it's okay. But it's still good, it's still coffee. Um, and this McDonald's made it perfect, oh my gosh. Mm. Um, where to next? I'm trying to think about, you know what guys? <laughs> I went to the grocery store to get eggs yesterday. $5 for a Meyer brand. Twelve, five, five dollars for a dozen eggs, Meyer brand. You gotta be messed up. So I got the Eglin's Best boiled eggs that are already boiled. They're not bad actually. They're pretty good. But five dollars for twelve eggs, a off brand. What is going on? I remember this time last year, eggs were like a dollar for an off brand, like Meyer brand. Twelve eggs was like a dollar and eighty nine cents. Snow is coming down a little harder. Thank God the roads are fine and the highways are good. It's just, it is slick, don't get me wrong, but if you just drive safe, you're gonna be okay. So I'm happy that that's, but you always got those few asshole, uh, excuse my language, you always got those few people that just drive crazy. So let's go in and get the damp bread. God works in mysterious ways. Um, I thought I, I thought there was something wrong with my propane switch, but I didn't know the on off switch. I thought, but I was thinking maybe it was in my head. So I'm coming out of Lowe's and I walk to, to usually I come in on my side uh, door so that I can step on my rug. But for today I came in on my driver's side door and I noticed that my propane switch was turned on. So I bent over to turn it off and it was already on the off switch lit up. So I turned it on, turned it off, and the red light doesn't go off. So what happens is, when you turn off the propane, then the light goes off. When you turn it on, the red light comes on. So I turned off the propane, the light was still lit. I came in, turned on my stove, everything works. So my on-off switch doesn't work. Let me show you. This is just, this is too much. Let me show you. 
See that? It's off, but you see the light is on. On. It's it's still it's still lit up. Let me make sure. Let me try something. Nope. It's not that. It doesn't shut off. It it's it's on regardless. You see that? You can still see it's lit up. And it doesn't shut off. But this is what they're fixing tomorrow. This does not work at all. And now this doesn't work. It, it, it's not off. You see, it's lit up. So I'm gonna have them take a look at that. Oh, never ends, never ends. Never ends. I'm gonna go get gas. I'm a little above the halfway mark, but I have to drive a little ways tomorrow to um, fill up my propane. <laughs> to fill up my propane that's funny i have to drive a ways tomorrow to get my van rv fixed so i need to fill up and i'm gonna call them in 15 minutes when they open up to uh talk to my caseworker and let her know that my propane switch doesn't turn off the propane never turns off and if that's a problem because i can't fill up my propane thank god i have three-fourths of a, of a of a tank of propane but if it doesn't turn off, I can't fill it up. That's dangerous. And it was just working yesterday, a couple days ago, because I got it filled up a couple days ago. It doesn't turn off. So I gotta call her, and since they're working on that little screw knob for the propane uh, tank, they might as well um, take a look at the why the propane tank doesn't turn off. It's just, you see what I'm talking about? It's, it's one problem after another. get to the place where I'm going to be hunkering down for the day and night I'm going to do a Lowe's haul because I did buy other stuff besides damp bread and I'll show you guys but right now it's just it's one of these days where the weather is just like you're just chilling sleeping in watching a movie that's kind of the weather um <clears throat> it's still snowing but it, it's not cold enough for it to do any damage so that is just that's awesome and so far we've had a mild winter. <laughs> it's getting worse. Um, earlier the snow wasn't that bad. I'm hunkered down for the day and baby, it is getting, it's horrible out. Wow. Uh, my windows are covered. This is crazy. Oh. Um, okay. Wow, this is crazy. Okay, let's uh, get this folded up. I was going to put this up, but uh, I have you guys hanging on my rear view on my front window so I'm not going to put this up just yet okay let me move this in here and we'll do our haul and I'll show you guys what it looks like outside hand warmer nice and toasty haven't even put my laundry away that that is uh coming down it is going to be a long day but i am nice and warm and cozy i mean look how hard that's coming down and it's only 12 30 so it's gonna be a long day okay so damp red this is amazing for absorbing absorbing moisture um my van is very small my rv so this size is perfect I had two, but I only need one. So all you do is open it and then place it somewhere 
in your RV and it smells really good too. So I'm just gonna place it right behind the passenger seat on this stoop and this is where it'll stay. Then I bought these and these are wonderful if you have like closets that you are, that you can hang stuff on. So what I'm gonna do, you see, I'll show you. Like if you have like a closet that has a, a bar that you can hang stuff on or if you have, you see how I have these? you can hang stuff on. So what I'm gonna do, you see this? So what it does is this attracts the moisture right here and then the moist, the water falls in here. So I'm gonna hang this up in my bathroom. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here, it's hanging up, right next to my towel. And I got a box of three, so the rest of this will just go inside of my bathroom and my closet. This is trash. I no longer need this. Let's put this away. Then I bought these. These are compost, uh, compostable cleaning wipes, compositable cleaning wipes, safe around kids, pets, and food. So I'm gonna use this for everything, to wipe out my dishes, to wipe things down. Um, if it's safe around kids, pet, and food, then it's not gonna harm me. And I swear by these, these have your whole RV smelling like heaven. Yes, they're expensive. It's like six something for two. This is six something, this is six something. So total 13 for four. I don't care. I love my RV smelling good. I don't like my RV smelling like food or anything like that. That's why I always keep my vent open, just cracked. And I use these damp ribs. It absorbs moisture. You could put this anywhere. Um, I might put it actually, um, no, I'll leave it back here. Uh, you could put it anywhere. But I, I, I put that up here for the cab and then I have one in there for the bathroom. And then this, I'm gonna use one right now. And all you need is one because for my cab, because my RV is class B, it's very small. So all you do is this back right here, you line it up. Let's see. You line it up with the, you see how you line it up with that? And then you just push it. I always hate it because it, it's really kind of hard to push. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So you push it in and it pierces it. Oh, and it smells like heaven. So these are the most popular ones that sell out so fast. This brand, this this smell right here. These smell these sell out so fast. And so now what I'm gonna do. It's just put it up here so that it can come out this way. I'm just gonna put it right there. And then I'm gonna open the rest and store it. Got a little storage down here with my washcloths and stuff. I'll just throw it down here. And then throw these away. And then I'm just going to start wiping stuff down. I'm going to show you how I clean. Yes, my RV is always clean because I'm all, look, I, this is how I do it. I, some, a lot of you in the comments are like, oh, you OCD, blah, blah, blah. Look, I just like a clean living space. I feel like if my living space is clean, mentally, I will feel good. So I'll show you what I clean, used to clean with. And I used, I stored in here. Anyways, this is what I use. I swear by this stuff. This is multi-use. You can use it on stainless steel, stoves, everything. I use it for my ceilings. I use it for everything. This, and it smells fresh. It's gain. This is the best stuff ever. So essentially, you just get like a dry rag or something, and then you spray it and you wipe. So I do my 
I never use this, but you know, cooking, dust. So spray this at least once a week, clean it. Spray a little light. I got glasses, so my eyes are good. I'll spray the ceiling. Wipe the ceiling. Go over the fire extinguisher, or the smoke detector. And you know, I hit the ceiling because I cook. You know, I don't want that smell to be stuck in the ceiling. Then I hit the microwave. fingerprints and stuff. Then I hit this storage. I do need to get this glass, but I gotta unscrew some stuff. Then I'm gonna use this because this is lint. This picks up lint. So I'm just gonna go over whatever kind of lint that might've been left. Hit that light, hit the ceiling. I'm short, but I'm on my tiptoes. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the cabinets. I get above it. Hit this. Again, when you cook and you're in a small space, you know, smells absorb through everything. You know, I hit these drawers. And I try to do this once a week. Then I take my lint, this picks up lint, and I just go over it, buff it out, whatever lint that might have been left behind, you know. That's why everything's so shiny in here. I go over the cabinets. Yeah, they're coming in here to work tomorrow, so it's pointless, but still. <sighs> then, I've already done this this morning, but I'll do it again. Just because of little fingerprints. I hit this. You know? I love how this looks on stainless steel. It makes it look so good. I hit the back of walls, you know, cooking. I even hit this. Man, it's bad out. I don't use the sink, but I still like to keep it shiny. I'm not gonna do too much over here since they do have to get in here. So I'm just gonna hit this. It's not that important because they do have to move these drawers out. But that's kind of what I do, guys. I do this, I try to do this once a week. Now I get the ceiling. And that's how it keeps my RV smelling fresh and clean because I, you know, I use stuff that's good smells good it keeps not only everything fresh and clean but smelling really well smelling really good my rv will never ever smell inside if i can help it i know it's not good to say never but i mean never i hit the ceilings and then i hit the keypad a little monitor pad and i go over everything hit the pad Hit this, hit the ceiling. <sighs> Open up this vent a little more. There we go. 
And that's kind of what I, like I said, I try to do this once a week just to keep everything, get that ceiling over here. It's important for that. I don't clean the microwave out as much as I should, although I do use the microwave. so fresh and so clean guys call me OCD whatever I just like a clean living space I like a clean living space devoid of clutter then I hit this again when you cook even if you vent the smells travel sticks into stuff you don't want your van smelling like food and breath and must and just body and you know, moisture. Go over it. My appointment tomorrow at the RV Center is for 9 o'clock. So I'm going to try to get there like 30 minutes early so that I can prep my van for people to walk around in here, come in here. So we'll see. Um, hopefully I can get that taken care of before they come in. And uh, yeah, that's how, and it smells good in here too from the fresh smelling scent. Um, and yeah, we're done. Put this back on, prevent any kind of leakage, and I store it in my sink. And then laundry. But I will spare you guys laundry. I forgot to wash my towel, but you know what? I'm not stressing. Everything looks, everything smells good, it looks fresh. Everything's sparkly, fresh. Um, we're snowed in. I'll do a little bit of this laundry, but I'll spare you guys. I won't do the whole thing. Let's put it down here. Put my t-shirts away. I got to hang up. Guys, I have a stain on my green hoodie. Like oil stain from cooking, splat splattering. And I remember what you guys told me. In one of my videos, use Dawn dish soap on it. Scrub it real good before you wash it and it'll come out. And I'm looking at my hoodie. No stains. It got the splash out, the grease out. I was so happy. So, this may be a little excessive, but I like an art my RV to smell good. Just like when I lived in a house, I loved my house to smell fresh. Pro tip, and I can't take the credit for this because a coworker taught me this. Take um, your favorite fabric softener, put a little bit in a spray bottle, add it with water, mix it with water, shake it real good and then i use it as a an air freshener on my on my curtains i spray it and it keeps my curtain smelling fresh because you know when you cook you just shake it real good you know when you cook you know stuff tends to it's just like for breeze but for breeze on crack like this is so much better because it lasts a long time and i'll spray here And it, this lasts a long time. And I, I'd use this probably once a week. And if I feel like my, if I leave my RV and come back in and it smells fresh, then I won't use it. Um, then I'll, I'll wait for the next week. But this is how I keep my RV smelling fresh. That's another way that I do that. So those are some of the really cool hacks that I use to kind of keep my RV smelling fresh, keep it clean. It may seem a little excessive to some but I have to live in it. And if I don't feel clean, if I feel like, you know, it smells like, you know, onions that I cooked a week ago or, you know, a stir fry that I made two weeks ago, I, I'm not going to be able to sleep. Like I need to be fresh in here. So I spray my 
curtains with that. I spray the couch. This little cloth right here, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. This cloth right here, I'll spray this. Anything that has cloth on it, um, I'll spray it so that it smells fresh. And trust me, if you were ever to come in here, it wouldn't be overpowering. It'd be a nice soft scent. You'd be like, wow, it smells good in here. Like, this smells so good. So, yeah, there's that. All right, guys, I'm going to put all this up, and I'll see you guys in a bit. So right now I'm outside checking my generator pipe to make sure they're not, it's not clogged with snow. And I'm going to check my actual exhaust pipe to make sure that's not clogged with snow because uh, carbon monoxide is a real thing. Even though I do have a carbon monoxide detector inside of my van. So let's take a look. So there's the exhaust. It looks good. It's clear. And then, um, my exhaust pipe for, let's see here. Where is it? There it is, there's my exhaust. No snow, clear. So I gotta make sure this snow doesn't build up before I start my van, but that's clear. We're all good. All right, I'm gonna go back inside. Generator just kicked on. Uh, it's cold. It's rainy. Or raining. <laughs> it's, uh, it's snowing pretty bad. And uh, it's cold out. Battery has dropped. So my generator, let me show you guys how we are rocking and rolling. Let me show you how this works. You see that right there? That is the automatic generator function. Auto generator. So what I do is when I turn that on, when one of these batteries drop below 12 volts, the generator automatically kicks in and recharges both batteries. So the generator is gonna run for about 20 minutes and then it's gonna automatically shut off. And that's what it's gonna do. Um, and that's how we survive the frigid colds and keeping the batteries fully charged and uh, not letting them go before below 12 volts. And for those of you who don't know about batteries, uh, anything below 12 volts, your battery's dead, uh, pretty much. Well, these batteries. So I, turned on the auto generator function. Uh, we have seven eighths of propane. We're still good on that. And currently it's at 65 degrees in here, but I'm gonna turn that down because I don't want to get too hot. So we're gonna make that at, we'll do 55. And this is why I have a shovel. Let me show you what the snowplow guy did to me. Like twice, this is so foul. Let me show you, I'm about to dig myself out. I guess I have to check on uh, the status of my van, because I just keep getting plowed in. What's this, like two feet? I just cleaned my window, so I'm going to dig myself out because I'm stuck at this point. I do have a shovel, thank God. When I say I'm hot, I literally just dug myself out. I am so happy I have a shovel. Because without a shovel, I don't know how I would have got out. I literally don't know. So... I'm gonna have to keep checking. Every time I hear the snowplow guy come through, if I'm up, I'm gonna go out there and clear in front of my vehicle. I cannot be stuck in the morning. Oh my gosh, I should have went somewhere else, but it is what it is. That was a lot of snow. I haven't done that since I lived in the house. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and rest, rest up and lay down. I'm tired, I, I turned my heat off. I'll see you guys in a bit.
so the, the here's the deal. I left where I was at. Um, the snowplow guy kept coming through and piling me up, like like blocking me in. I mean, and this snow wasn't like a half a foot high or a few inches. No, it was like almost to um, the bottom of my hood. Like that's high. I had to keep coming out. And and, and 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 you know shoveling myself you know a path in front of my vehicle and then he would come back around by the third time fam I was done I threw all my stuff together it's like half a it's half a everywhere like it, I just I was like I was over it and a lot of the vans that were um, with me that were parked where I was at they left I left too I'm not about to keep getting blocked in by snow so I'm going somewhere else I went to one place after I left I went to my 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 second backup and it was hard to get in I was like I don't even want to risk getting stuck so now I'm going to my third backup my third backup should be good so that's where I'm headed now fam I'm a bit frustrated I haven't eaten I'm just at the point now where I just want to get somewhere and hunker down because I got to be at this place at 9 a.m. and I'm hoping the roads are good and it, it's safe enough for me to drive I'm still gonna go I need to get this done I don't want to push this back any further so I'll see you guys when I get to the place where I'm going to be hunkering down for the night. Hopefully I'll be able to get in safely and be able to stay because this will be my third place that I'm, ch I'm checking out. Cross our fingers fam. Tired of driving. I'll see you guys in a bit. No cooking tonight. I microwaved some rice, some chicken sausage, threw some cheese on it with a little bit of soy sauce, sweet soy sauce. It's been a long rough, <laughs> rough day dealing with this snow um it's still going so it's starting to lighten up a little bit but i had to change places i i just kept getting plowed in i mean i exaggerated when i said two feet high but that snow in front of my van was at least a little over a foot and each time i would shovel it and get it out the way and clear a nice beautiful path Boom, another foot and some change. I'm like, I can't keep doing this, you know? So I left and the roads were slick, ice and slick and slush. And I didn't care. I, I didn't want to be there anymore. And then as I was coming to my new place, I saw people, you know, this guy in a ditch facing the, 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 the opposite direction of the highway. And then I saw a bunch of ambulances out, fire trucks. It was a pretty bad accident on the way here. In addition to the guy being in a ditch. I don't know the circumstances of those accidents, but my heart goes out to those people and I hope everything is okay. But man, even when I was driving here, there were people that were speeding extremely fast <clears throat> and I was in the right lane going 60, you know, I wasn't going to go any faster than that. There was ice, there was slush, the roads are slick. My, don't get me wrong. My van drove beautifully. I'm so, so happy. I got those new tires because the van drove beautifully. Um, I, this ain't my best work. So for those of you, for those of you who will stick through, stick with me through thick and thin, no matter what I eat, give it a try. It's, it, it is really good. Chicken sausage, rice, something simple. Have that bite. Okay. I know there is some fam out there that are like, nah, man, I'm skipping dinner. I'll check you on the next, on the next dinner. That's fine. I'm just... I barely even want to eat. <laughs> it's just been that kind of day. Not only dealing with plowing, but just the snow. It was. Just, it's just a lot. It's it just. Uh, I'm so tired of the snow and the cold. I just hope the roads are are safe enough to drive for me to drive tomorrow. I'm still gonna do it, but. I have a bit of a drive to get to the RV center. Mm. Tomorrow is going to be another long day. Don't worry, I'm taking you guys with me. It's going to be a long day. to 
the RV center so they can do the minor repairs that I discussed with you guys in my previous video. Um, I'm gonna arrive there about 15 minutes early. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my lunch because last last couple times that I went, it took all day and I was buying vending machine food and like cookies out the vending machine and chips. I just wasn't feeling healthy. So I'm gonna make me a, a couple sandwiches, a little, I got little rolls, make some sandwiches and bring a pear and that'll be my lunch if I'm there a long time, which I probably am, probably will be. Uh, so last night I slept really good. Uh, after I finally got to my third spot and kind of laid low for a while, it was nice. Um, the parking lot was nice, everything was good. So I'm thankful for that, but uh, we're supposed to get another two to four inches this weekend. And that kind of ruins my weekend plans that I had uh, for the weekend. So I'm gonna play it by ear because two to four inches, that's a lot especially around people who don't know how to drive. So, we're on our way to the RV Center. When I get there, I'll walk you through one more time to show you what they're gonna be fixing. I'm gonna make me my sandwiches and then uh, it's gonna be a long day. So I'll see you guys in a bit. what I'm gonna do is a couple things before they come in here uh, they shouldn't have to go in my bathroom so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this rug up this is my rug that I step on um, when I'm you know I don't got any shoes on and I don't want them stepping all over it so that's in the bathroom I'm gonna turn this rug around here. There we go. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna make me a, a sandwich real quick to take in. I've got these breads. Are they still good? The 26, yep, they're still good. So this will be like breakfast. I got a pear. Oh yeah, it's getting ripe. When I bought it, they were kind of hard, but these pears you don't eat hard, you eat them soft. So I'm gonna take in two two pairs. Oh, this one got fractured. No, no. I'm still gonna eat it. I'm gonna eat this one first. Um, dang it, dang it. That's that. And now I'm gonna make the sandwich. We're gonna make just a turkey sandwich with mayo. Go across the bread. This bread is pretty thick. Um, got some shredded cheese. So typically I use sliced cheese, but I don't have any of that. So we're gonna throw a little shredded cheese on there. And then we're gonna be using tur honey turkey. Honey roasted turkey. I got this from Sam's Club. And uh, I'm gonna lay it on there thick and then fold it. There we go. So we got a sandwich. We got pears, and then um, I'm gonna bring a couple boiled eggs. That's my lunch. I didn't even put this up, get all this put away. 
Man, we're expecting more snow, like I was saying. That's, uh, you know what? We need it. We need the snow. We can't have a mild winter. We need winter. We need snow. So these are the eggs that I have. They're boiled, and they taste really good, actually. So I'm going to put about, they're 50 calories an egg, so I'll put two eggs in there. That would be my breakfast. Two boiled eggs and a pear. We got one minute, so let's do this quick run through and then we're headed out. They're going to be trying to, trying to fix this because every time I plug something in, it makes like a frying sound, like something's frying. So they're gonna fix this USB port or try to and this USB port. Now behind these cabinets, these uh, behind these drawers, uh, about right in this area right here, there's a wheel well cover that covers the back passenger uh, wheel. That's a screw came off, and so the wheel well cover is just flapping. They're going to take a look at that. And then the other thing they're going to take a look at is outside. So let's get ready to get out. Let's take a look. Van is nice and clean. Hopefully it comes back looking that way. But let's go. Let's get up out of here. Now, they're supposed to be fixing... This right here, this is broke, this does not work. And now all of a sudden the light wants to turn on and off. But I'm not gonna say nothing because I still want them to take a look at it to make sure it works. So let's go in. I got some exciting news. Um, the mechanic came back and got me because he had some questions about what I needed. About uh, He had some questions about a few things that I needed to get fixed, so everything is good on that. But he said that my inverter system is designed to only run off the USB and the lights and stuff. He said, because if it operates the USB, the lights and everything else and all the plug outlets, it would blow the batteries. But he said, you do have one plug outlet that operates off the inverter system. And he showed me and I almost was in tears, guys. That means I can use my crock pot and everything without turning on my generator. I have a plug that works. This is a game changer. I can get me a, a air fryer and everything. That's why I never got the air fryer because it's like, what's the point of using the air fryer? I gotta turn on my generator. I don't, I have a freaking plug outlet that operates off the inverter. I'm so happy. Also, I broke down and bought these fuses. So they say it's always good to have, especially when I, for full-time travel, since it's coming up so soon. It's coming guys, it's coming. So be patient with me. But I bought the fuses. So I'm still at the RV place. It's going to be a while, but uh, I'll check back in when uh, things are done. I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm finished. They fixed everything that was wrong with it. As far as the wheel well cover, the guy said that that is not the wheel well cover. Um, he said that how it is, it's fine. He said that the wheel well cover, the cover is uh, actually metal and it's welded so you're completely safe he took a look at it he said there's nothing to worry about so I'm happy on that as far as the plug outlet working um our the RV center which I freaking love the the lady that I've been working with she's amazing she said that she called Thor um, about the inverter system and about the plug outlet that worked and Thor said that yes the plug outlet does work but if you use it without running the generator, it's going to drain like a lot of power from the battery. It's gonna take all the power from the battery. So they said, if I wanna use the plug, plug outlet, um, it's best to run the generator while using the plug outlet so that that generator can keep the batteries constantly charging. So at this point, I might as well just get a separate inverter system for the plug outlets or just, just break down and buy um, uh, to break down and buy like a Jackery or an EcoFlow or something like that so that I can use it to plug stuff in. So that's something to consider. But everything is done uh, for today. I need to, I'm gonna go back and clean my floors. It actually cleaned the floors for me because when I came in here, when the uh, maintenance guy took me back uh, to the back to show me a couple things and ask some questions, the floor was dirty, but now it's spotless. So I'm happy, right on. So I'm going to go ahead and head out of here and I'll see you guys in a bit. The snow is starting up again. Uh, we're supposed to get two to four inches, like I said, but 
it's starting to kind of snow and rain at the same time. Man, this weather's unpredictable. Here's the finished results. I wanted something creamy. Uh, sorry I did not show you guys what I used. Um, I overslept and I'm extremely tired. I was like, woke up, didn't even realize where I was, but I will definitely, this is a recipe that I'll definitely be doing again on the channel. You know, essentially it's just corn, uh, potatoes, shrimp, um, olive oil, uh, um, avocado oil, um, coconut milk, and then seasonings and some cheese. Uh, it's very cheesy very good mm. Mm, mm, mm. this is nice um this is probably gonna more than likely half for dinner tonight and the other half for lunch and there's rice in here as well the seasonings seasonings are like onion salt garlic powder cayenne pepper <clears throat> paprika a little bit of chili uh, chili uh, powder mm, mm -mm. got some shrimp in here uh, I'm all over the place I don't I don't I think I already said shrimp I'm not sure but this is something that I'll definitely um, do again here have a bite it's really nice Mm. The flavor is so good. It's got some cayenne pepper. I haven't used cayenne pepper in so long. It's snowing again. Mm. This is really good. And I added a little bit of cheese. Normally I, I'm heavy on the cheese, but I didn't want a strong cheese flavor. I wanted to taste the paprika, and the onion salt, the garlic powder. A cayenne pepper. I wanted to taste all of that. The chili powder, paprika. I hope you guys are doing okay out there. Um, staying safe. The weather is definitely unpredictable. Um, what did y'all eat today? What did y'all do today? How was work? Um, hope every, like I said, hope everything's going well. If not, I hope it gets better. I fell asleep reading. Mm, this is good. Mm. The flavor, I can't even describe it. And since it's cold outside, I wanted something hearty, satiating, comforting. Having whipping cream would have been really good in here, but coconut, unsweetened coconut milk is healthier, of course. It's a bit spicy. It's been a minute since I've had cayenne pepper. My tolerance. Woo, girl. I'm losing it. It was so hot in here, I had to turn the heat down. I had it at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> that was too hot for me. Um, and a t-shirt on the, under the sleeping bag. So, I, I put it to 55 instead. 
which is a lot more comfortable. Since it's late, I don't want to finish all this. So I'm going to stop here because this is going to be lunch tomorrow. Ooh, fire. Mouth is... I lost my uh, cayenne pepper tolerance, guys. You know me. I was heavy on the pepper, the cayenne pepper now. Back in the day, I'm losing it. But I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Ooh, it's hot. Um, I hope you enjoyed <clears throat> hanging out with me over the last couple days. See my ups and downs during this winter, getting plowed in a thousand times, driving in the stuff, switching spots, trying to get comfortable, getting this RV fixed. Um, it's been a, a heck of a couple days and very productive. But yeah, we got it. We're getting it done. We're getting it done. One step closer to getting out of here. But I wanted to say that I appreciate you guys more than you know. Um, I appreciate you guys taking a little bit of your time out of your day to hang out with me, watch my videos, have dinner with me. Um, I appreciate you sharing your stories that I love reading your stories and just, I, I, I really do love it. Appreciate you liking, uh, the video and just being interactive. You just, you guys are freaking awesome. Without you, there would be no channel. There'd be, there'd be no YouTube channel. So thank you so, so much. It means the world to me. But it's time for me to get out of here, relax a little bit, let this food digest, and go back to sleep. Thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Peace.